you know, just going back and thinking about some of the some of the things that are happening today. Just thinking, in about a week, we'll be celebrating 50 years. Custom Auto will be 50 years old. Um, we started there there 50, 46 years ago. And so, what was I doing when I was 17 years old? Where did I want to go? What did I want to do? What did I want to do when I was 20? What did I want to do when I was 30? Well, obviously, you know, Packard was a car that I drove when I was in high school. And Packard was a car that I, you know, knew a little bit about, that I became to know a lot about. And as I would be on trips and I'd be places, I learned that Packard was a very, very, very well-respected name in the automotive field. But how was that? To me, I mean, I worked in a, I worked at Custom Auto Service, and I worked for a real, you know, hardworking guy, and he was very passionate about everything he did. He actually was a, studied to be a concert pianist, and he uh, just, but he hated what he did. He really, uh, you know, he he for years worked for the Auto Club, and Bill Lauer. Bill worked for the Auto Club and hated working for the Auto Club, but he always told me that, you know. Through that, in I guess, relationship, got him to start this relationship. So he opened up this building and opened it up not just for Packers at the time, but fixing old cars. That was his passion at home. So he turned it into a business. And as the business grew into a business, um, it became something that I don't think he even imagined because you know a small business that went out of business you have to remember he started in 66 when Packard went out of business in 58 so what is that seven years seven years Packard is out of business and Bill now is driving a 53 Caribbean he's got a Nash he just loves old cars and he's in a business in a garage that he rented that would just fix old, uh, old, old cars but there was probably some crazy times that happened to Bill. One of them was that uh, Lee Hadley, who owned this building, he and his wife were going to Vegas and I guess were involved in a head-on uh, car crash. Because at that point, Bill was always renting this building. And anyways, uh, forced Bill into buying this building. And he did buy this building. And, and for years, uh, Bill owned the business for 17 years. And, but there were, through that course of time, probably within the first 10 years, you know, he owned the building and it was a, it was a business. Um, well, then I come along, seven, 1971, and working for Bill, doing, I've always said, uh, everything. Uh, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Um, but doing everything. And, but you have to do that to eventually come full circle of how you're going to own a business if you don't know how it works. And so. I got to work at work and through the process and working I got to be a responsible person in the fact that by 1983 um, Bill was talking to me about wanting to sell the business and the, not that he, I was the first person he chose but I was the last person standing that actually agreed to buy the building and I did and I bought the building the business and um, and then within a couple of years, well, within a year of buying the business, we fixed the place up as you would buy anything and fix it up. Um, but within that year, year and a half, I did get the city of Santa Ana send me a letter that they were, that I was aware that it was in a redevelopment area and that they would obviously make me a fair offer, but they would eventually take the property through a form of eminent domain. Well, you can imagine all the sleepless nights that you would have in 83, 84, 85, and not even knowing if you made the right decision. Because the people you would talk to who were, who were lawyers or who were uh, smarter than you would always tell you how you're just a dead duck. So, you know, having that thought process of you're going to be a dead duck anyways, what do you do? Well, you basically do what you only think you can do, and that is to survive. Through that process, um, you know, you're kind of like tied behind your hands and you're on the fourth floor and eventually they're going to throw you out the window. So what do you do? Um, well, 
through the process, there was a there was an, a, a guy in the city council who eventually became the vice mayor, who really was the champion of this business and this development, eventually known as the Fiesta Marketplace, that became the the jewel of this entire area. His name is Dan Grisette. Dan had the ability and the power and the focus to give us a chance. Now, it probably wasn't all up to him, and he probably had a lot of political allies at the same time that basically, you know, were, I mean, it was a move, but it turned out to be that he was the one who basically got the help from the city to help a business concern in this downtown to offer them up the chance to develop a four city block development. So 86, wow, we're, we're uh, you know, we created the Fiesta Marketplace. Eventually it wound up to be five partners. We created this Fiesta Marketplace and for 25 years it, it stayed a Fiesta Marketplace. And uh, just recently, about a year ago, possibly two years, um, it, it was disbanded or at the Fiesta Marketplace and it became under one ownership and it's become called the East End. But, you know, for for 25 years there, um, the, the city basically um, prospered because it created an energy of a core of downtown. So, going through a lot of tumultuous times, you can see where, you know, what does one do and how does one survive? And what is, you know, what is the story to tell? Well, the story has a lot of chapters. But we're now... You know, 2016, June 4th, 2016, we're going to celebrate 50 years of being on this corner. And I have to say that all the battles that we've fought and all the challenges that we've faced, we've had a lot of successes. And a lot of successes are because of everyone, um, our customers, uh, the community. Uh, we have just a, um, a group of people, and there's too many to mention, but, you know, you, you, we've created a lifestyle for a life for a lot of families down here. And we've watched, uh, you know, this city basically, it's funny, I think we've been through three mayors and about 16 councilmen. And three city managers, each one of them working hard, each one of them doing their best, and each one of them um, you know, wanting to make things work. So out of this, this whole picture, we're going to celebrate 50 years. And I'm just so glad, because 25 years ago, it was written where International Magazine, we say, you think this is something, wait for 25 years down the road, we'll show you something. Well, I'm going to tell you, 25 years down the road, June 4th, we're going to show you something. We've had, literally, we've had champagne and wine shipped in. In fact, our, our wine is uh, being supplied by the, the famous uh, Bonovia Wine Mill. And that's uh, that's in Santa Rosa, and uh, they're they're flying in the cases, and it's going to be Pinots and Chardonnays, and the food is going to be specially prepared to surround those wines. Now, is that decadent or what? But uh, of course, we're going to have your you know your fun drinks, your beers, your cokes, your your apple ciders. We'll do champagne, but we're going to do what we should have done or what I promised to do 25 years ago. We're gonna celebrate the golden anniversary in the city of Santa Ana on a golden day because this golden goose has laid a golden egg for us to have that golden anniversary. We would have supported Packard because without Packard, you wouldn't have custom auto service. And without custom auto service, I wouldn't be sitting here telling you a golden story. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Escalante.